I don't have much of a social life outside of work. Part of me chooses that. I think about like the things that I might be missing because I'm baking so much. But I just love to bake and that's all I want to do. years to find an actual space that I wanted to work in. I just figured I'd get a bakery and then I'd get a market and I'd be flying, but it was just so much more than I expected. The idea behind living out the back of the bakery was that whenever I had the creativity, I would just get up and bake but it didn't happen. It was a little bit overwhelming, actually. I wasn't meant to be living in the bakery, actually. I'm pretty sure that landlords knew, because they would ask little subtle questions like, how's your love life going? <laughs> I tried the internship in France, Japan, Taiwan. I only heard back from one person, a Japanese chef or baker living in Taiwan. That's probably where I learned my work ethic from as well, because we were baking 12, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. It was kind of maniacal, but I loved it. interested in creating bread that's as healthy as possible. Ideally you would want to go organic, completely sourdough, but the problem is that it's too expensive. Australia definitely has the middle class that's willing to buy organic, but also $10 a loaf can be kind of confronting if that loaf is going to last you one or two days. People often tell me that I should advertise the fact that I've won a few competitions. I definitely feel uncomfortable saying that I've won a national competition. I feel like it was something that I did just for personal development rather than for some sort of ego advertisement. It comes back to the fact that I really struggle to sell myself and my product and I really, really, really feel that the product should speak for itself. level of bread people will recognize but they won't necessarily think it's the next level of bread I think it's young <laughs> 